why do projects take so long? Let's explore using my experience as part of a RQ4 Global Hawk development team as an analogy. I'm going to do this at a summary level. To start with, the Global Hawk had its beginnings as a DARPA program back in the 1990s, and they're known for experimenting and rapid prototyping, a defense Tesla, if you will. The idea behind it was to take off-the-shelf tech and build the next generation unmanned recon air vehicles. A couple key points to bear in mind. Unmanned tech was actually relatively mature by the, mature by the 1990s, but just not in widespread use. And the Air Force is run by pilots, so replacing pilots was, and to some extent still is, a cultural issue for the Air Force. Out of this program came both the Predator and the Global Hawk. The mission of the Global Hawk was to be similar to the U-2, and the first two prototypes were completed in approximately three years, depending on how you want to measure start to finish. Pretty quick for an airplane or an automobile. In the case of the Global Hawk, there was a cost constraint along with the performance requirements. The idea was that it was better to make a cheaper unmanned vehicle, accepting a higher failure rate i.e. occasional crashes were okay and compensated for by the lower cost. And the lower cost would allow for more Global Hawks to be built to offset the higher payload that the U-2 can carry. Sounds good, right? Testing took a couple more years after they were finished to wring out the items that were absolutely must fix. Five years total for a functioning prototype using a new airframe, new radar and infrared sensors that was flying at 60,000 feet. I was a part of the program during that period. It was impressive. And I wanna say it used a first rate team on both the government and the contractor side for all 12 years that I was affiliated with the program one way or another, which is important not to forget for projects. Projects need a lot of skilled staff and not just a few talented individuals. Now, if you go to the wiki page for the Global Hawk, it paints a slightly different picture. First and foremost, it highlights a huge cost increase. So let's go through why that happened. First is that the original $10 million price tag was never achieved. Think 15 to 20. There were reasons why this happened, but all projects have unexpected events that impact cost. For fielding the tech that was involved, it was still a great accomplishment, even at $20 million. And during this time, Northrop bought Global Hawk from Teledyne, the original manufacturer. The two companies had very different cultures and experiences. The Global Hawk is not a B-2 bomber. And a B2 culture adds costs, but brings the advantage of a company that has a lot more experience fielding and maintaining systems. No one likes to think of that type of cost, but in the real world, keeping a car running over a longer period is more important than the first 36,000 miles. And that's just as true for airplanes. But then came the prototype capabilities versus what the customer wanted problem. Building twice or even four times as many Global Hawk for the price of a U-2 sounds like a great deal. The average mission lasts two to three times as long as a U-2 mission, but the U-2, by virtue of carrying more payload, has better sensors. Which is better? I can suggest some Reddit forums if you want to join that never-ending debate. Longer missions also bring a longer logistics tail and a great deal more image processing on the ground. So when I hear someone say we need to upgrade the electrical grid for renewables, it sounds like my experience with the image processing for the Global Hawk. Just automate it and do more. How hard can that be? The answer is very hard and not free. To try to address these concerns, the Global Hawk was upgraded to increase payloads by 50%. I was part of that team as well. I imagine people who remember me from that period either praise or curse my name. Both are probably warranted. And in the cost 
of uh, add in the cost of upgraded sensors, decreased production rate and quantities, and you end up with a really expensive air vehicle. Comparing today's RQ4B to the original RQ4A is like comparing a motorcycle to a car, with the U2 in my comparison being an SUV. How hard could it be squeezing out a little more performance? Just use the latest tech and shrink it a little. Oh, how many times have I heard this? Bigger wings with the same engine and a lot of help from the Pentagon and decision making. Do I think it's a good system? Yes, I do. Was it full of trade-offs? Cost a lot and take a long time? Yes, it did. It's at this point that my involvement with the RQ-4 largely came to an end. 12 years is a long time for an Air Force officer to be around one program. But after I left, the Air Force actually decided at one point to, to retire the Global Hawk. Fortunately, that never happened. In large part, that consideration was due to the Air Force wanting all the U-2 capabilities without trading off anything for the long endurance. And that, in my experience, is rarely possible. Projects do not exist in a vacuum. I have worked on seven to nine projects over the course of my career. Success or failure has more to do with how well they meet customer expectations versus solving technical problems. Customer expectations are rarely based solely on logic, be that commercial or government. So the next time you think, why can't we just do it faster? Just remember that the people telling you they need time have a reason for what they're saying. You may not agree, but a rush project typically has long-term problems. Remember the DeLorean. Future videos will from time to time dive a little bit more into my Global Hawk experience and provide some perspective. Let me know any specifics you'd like to hear about. Thanks and talk to you soon.